We're here today with Dr. Fred Brown. Uh, he's a doctor of veterinary medicine and he runs Stone Mountain Kikos. And we're going to do some laparoscopic AI today. Actually going to be putting some goats to sleep and inserting some semen into the uterine horns. So uh, I think you're going to enjoy this video. So hang out with us. Let's see how it all works out. <laughs> She's already going down. I guess she's laying down easy. So some local anesthetic as well as chemical restraint. Pretty easy to put a little lidocaine there just to give some uh, more control. numbing and pain control there. So that's important for me. So we'll prep one more time and then we'll move her in and try to get her situated. For two reasons. Uh, one is it helps all the uh, intestinal um, contents fall away from where the uterus is. And then the other thing is uh, under anesthesia, ruminants continue to produce uh, intestinal fluids, so if it needs to drain out uh, downward, then that helps us too in that regard. just so that we can uh, expand and push things away from uh, where we, so we'll uh, insert this very needle, uh, just pierce the abdomen. And once we get into the abdomen, we can rotate this down, then it's blunt. And then we can open it up. Uh, and, uh, so we like to get some, you know, some distinction there so that we can see what's going on. So we can see what's going on, so you kind of get it to where it's got some pain to it. Next time we put our trocar in. Our port. Pop through.
I'm gonna have her look. What kind of shape is it? Well, I tell you what, if you want to have a look, man, right there, I mean, I'm not going to mess with it because right there it is. Uh, if you want to have a look, yeah, I'd love to look take, at a, it. take a look. Right there is two hundred horns sitting right there at you. Oh, my goodness, that's just plain as day. Yep. That's amazing. Want to take a look? That's crazy. They're sticking right there at you. Just, just like that. Just, just like, like that, that right there. Yep, yep. that's yep. it. Okay. So now we're getting ready to insert our second uh, trocar uh, port so that we can uh, have uh, access for our uh, AI rod. We will thaw the semen in the thaw bath for about 45 seconds to a minute. So we've got a sheet that goes over our insemination gun with a needle on the end, and that's what it will allow us to inject the semen once we into each horn. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little semen on the slide here out of the straw just to look at. Ah. We'll get started. Ah. Alright, we got progressively modal semen. Sperms. I care if I look at that. No, we'll hit it. It's not like a fresh specimen, obviously, but uh, right. still, we got all movement. So. We got a lot movement, a lot of movement. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, if you get the rod. Was it? Oh that's good. Yeah, they need to come off. So if you can just uh, put that down. Okay, for me. And then, uh, ah! Push it a little further. Okay. Hang on. All right, give me half of there. I've just entered uh, one uterine horn. We're going to inject half of the semen into there. And so we'll come back out. And I'll insert the needle into the second uterine horn. Okay. And we'll deposit the... Awesome. So we're insemination complete. I prefer to put a couple of sutures across here. Um, I don't necessarily think you have to. I guess for me, right. it just makes me feel better. One suture across, just an absorbable suture. Uh, We won't have to take it out or anything, it'll just come out on its own. This makes me feel better. Alright, let's get her back upright. Putting her uh, in this stall right, right here, right, that it's back here, just opposite where they're at on the other right, side. Yeah, recuperate there.
Hey guys, this is Jamie again with Seven Sands Farm and we're here today with Dr. Fred Brown and Stone Mountain Kikos of Trap Hill, North Carolina. As you've seen throughout the video, we've been doing some laparoscopic AI. Is that correct? Yes, I sir. That yes right? sir. So what I'd like to do is for Dr. Brown to explain to us kind of the reason why why you choose to do that or how it helps your genetics or, or just tell us why you do it. Yeah, so Jamie, we like to uh, try to take some of the best does in our herd and uh, match them up with some uh, good genetic uh, bucks that uh, we wouldn't uh, ordinarily have um, the opportunity to breed to. So uh, this might be genetics from way back or this may be some of the newer genetics that doesn't live in our part of the country. So we like to, um, you know, try to take advantage of that and, um, you know, so we can have those offspring that we wouldn't ordinarily have. Uh, the reason we do it uh, laparoscopically is because um, the other uh, standard AI techniques can be used. Uh, they have their challenges. All of them have their challenges. Um, the, uh, the cervix in the goat uh, has, is, has a, quite a tortuous uh, nature to it, so it makes it difficult uh, to do simple, uh, what I call simple um, transvaginal or transcervical uh, artificial insemination. So we choose to um, synchronize the does and uh, put them through a minor uh, surgical procedure uh, where we're able to deposit the semen directly into the uterine horns. And uh, sometimes we use lower quality semen that maybe didn't freeze as well, but by depositing it uh, directly into the uterus, then uh, we give those um, sperm cells a better opportunity to be able to get in and for fertilization to take place. They don't have to travel as far through the vagina and then through the the yes. fallopian tubes. Is it still called? It's called the oviduct in oviduct. animals. Yeah, okay. but the fallopian tube and oviduct basically the fallopian tubes in, in people, uh, the oviduct in animals. Uh, but yes, yeah, so uh, you deposit it directly into the uterine horns, and the, the distance to travel up into the oviduct is not very far for those uh, sperm cells to get to that uh, egg that's been released. So it gives it a little more viability, I guess, or a chance for viability That's right. Uh, when you deposit it directly into those uterine horns. Yes, those uh, sperm cells don't have to expend as much energy to get up there as they would if they're deposited into the vaginal vault or, you know, even in the cervix. Okay. So what we've actually done, I guess we took for granted that everybody knows that, but we took a straw of frozen semen, is that correct? That's correct. And then you just explained that to us yeah. as well. Yeah. So we take the, the semen. Uh, that's in a frozen straw and uh, we load it into our artificial insemination gun. We have a special uh, sheath that goes over our, our, our um, insemination gun and then it has a needle on the end. So we're going in, as you saw in the video, I'm looking in uh, through the camera on one side uh, to visualize the uterine horns and then on the other port that we uh, have access port, then we take that uh, insemination gun that's got the needle on the end and then we're able to pierce each uterine horn uh, and deposit half the semen because goats have two two uterine horns so we uh, are able to deposit the semen there at the source and today what would you say i think we talked about one of the one of the doses of semen had was from 2014 so you've kept it for that long oh yeah so the semen has been frozen and can be frozen really indefinitely if it's cared for properly uh, and the semen tank is, uh, you know, maintained properly, uh, you can store semen for, for years. I okay. mean, some of it's older than that. So, gotcha. Uh, gotcha. And, you know, and a lot of these bucks are, are, are dead, too. So, you know, there's no semen available on them anymore. So that was, I was going to say that, too. Some of the bucks that could be used in semen no longer even alive, but they've been collected years ago and stored yeah. for some time. And yes. So, that, able to... so that's the other thing. If you have a... Uh, a, a buck that um, has value to you, um, you know, having that buck collected and having that semen stored away in a semen tank is good insurance policy uh, in case something happens to that buck. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting uh, me come out today and be a part of this. Mm -hmm. I've learned a whole lot. And uh, I know I've talked your head off through the whole thing, but uh, we sure do appreciate it. Is there anything else that you think that I've missed question-wise or you know, kind of good explanation of that? No, I think we've pretty much covered it all. One thing we didn't cover is that uh, uh, these does were, were programmed, which means we gave them uh, different medications and stuff in order to get them all at the same point in their cycle so that they're ready to ovulate uh, whenever we uh, 
you know, place the semen where it uh, should be. So it wasn't just a doe that you pulled out of the field. This one had a cedar implanted and then yes. some medications which That's made right. them uh, come into heat or estrus or ovulation at the same time. It, so there was some pre-planning going into what we did today too as yes, well. Yes, yes, we, pre we have to pre-plan and get that ahead. Uh, the, over the overall process as far as this, there's different protocols, but uh, the protocol that we used was a 10 day where we put a cedar in and the cedar is just a uh, controlled uh, inter uh, vaginal drug that releases uh, progesterone over time. We leave that in, uh, inserted into the dough for 10 days and then when we pull the cedar out uh, at that 10 day mark, we uh, give a, um, an injection then uh, to um, of what we call estromate, which is clothrostanol, or you could use lutelice. Um, but basically, we give that injection then, that's an, and then that's 48 hours prior uh, to when we're going to actually inseminate, 48 to 50 hours. Uh, then once we pull that, then we will inseminate in like 48 to 50 hours. Oh, great, great. Mm -hmm. That's awesome information. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for watching. Like I say again, this is Dr. Fred Brown of Stone Mountain Kikos, and that's in uh, Trap Hill, North Carolina. Facebook? I am on Facebook, yes. Uh, yeah. So he is on Facebook, so Stone Mountain mm -hmm. Kikos on Facebook. Or Fred Brown. Or yeah. Fred Brown on Facebook. Yep. Either one, if you have, uh, see this and maybe have some questions or some, you know, are interested in a goat or buying a Kiko goat from him, you can go check out or you know get that information from him. Guys, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll do it all again tomorrow.